Well, the new motor's ticking. Here we go again. What is up, everybody? Tommy here with Sinister Productions bringing you guys another vlog. So, um, as you probably just heard from the uh, beginning of the video, the brand new motor, brand new short block, is ticking again. So, um, yeah, so anyway, I uh, picked the car up last. I know the last update you guys got was me picking the car up uh, from the dealership, and this was probably the beginning, uh, beginning of December. So, I picked the car up from the dealership, drove it for two days. Uh, everything ran smoothly literally put 100 miles on the car and lo and behold the uh, yeah started ticking again obviously so um, I'm gonna go ahead and continue this story I forgot to do an intro before so uh, here's the rest of it oh and by the way I do apologize this is gonna be a pr pretty long drawn out uh, vlog, uh, just the description of what's going on, the story, trying to keep you guys up to date what's happened until now. A lot of stuff has happened, so please um, bear with me. It's got, got a lot of stuff to go through, so um, just hang tight. I promise it's got a lot of good information in there, so uh, just hold tight and I'll uh, see you at the end of the video. So, as you can tell, 100 miles later, after putting exactly 100 miles on the brand new short block. The car started to tick again and I've been in a probably a month and a half to two month battle with Ford um, over getting this resolved and you know I took it back to the dealership sat for two weeks uh, right after I picked it up um, the car sat there for two weeks they couldn't duplicate the issue again so um, you know it's got nothing to do with them I had a great wonderful service advisor um, the dealership itself has been pretty good in helping me out um, you know, but the thing is, is, you know, they couldn't duplicate it. So I had picked it up the next day or I picked it up on a Friday and that Saturday morning, first thing I did when I started the car up, the engine started ticking. So I duplicated the problem right then and there. And I called my advisor. I said, look, I'm bringing this thing back to you. I've duplicated it. Once I, what I'm going to do is, is I'm actually going to drive it up there and duplicate it for you again. So I take it up there on the Monday. I have the technician out there. I literally go up there. I sit. I wait for about two hours. Let the car cool off. Get the technician out there. Start the car back up. Boom. Ticks duplicated. Tick, tick. Kind of looks at the car and goes, sounds normal. Excuse me? I can't even tell you my reaction because I, I was exasperated of how he just was like that's normal I was like dude that's the exact same sound that you heard that I pointed out to you before that you replaced my motor because of so then I asked him I said so that's the normal sound was my motor broken or was it did you commit warranty fraud and he was like oh no 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 I didn't know I wouldn't have done that he's like it was a different sound the last time it was a clunking noise I said, well, it wasn't a clunking noise because if you read the RO, it said ticking noise on the plan as day on the RO that was written up. Um, and that's the exact same noise. I even told him, I said, that's the exact same noise I pointed out to you. And essentially he went, he changed the story three or four times during a five minute process. It said he went from that's completely normal sounding to recognizing and saying, oh, that's the typewriter tick, the typewriter tick. Okay, cool. So now you're recognizing that there's a problem, acknowledging that at least. Cool. Now what are we gonna do? He goes, oh, and well, that's that's a, that's a normal thing. Some of them get it. It's not hurting the car. So, typewriter ticks not hurting the car. Then why'd you replace my last motor with the cylinders three and five scored? Then he says, oh, that's an engineering defect. I can't fix that. Okay, cool. So let's get in touch with Ford. Tell him that, and give me another fucking car. So long story short, guys, so I waited, um, I picked the car up, I duplicated it, then um, Ford Techline then proceeded to tell my advisor to tell me that I needed to put 5,000 miles on this car 
and do an oil change on it before they would be willing to touch it again. I cannot tell you how pissed off I got. It's not the advisor's fault. I'm going to tell you now, the advisor was absolutely great. The service department is actually great. The technician, I've got my concerns about. I don't care if you're watching or not. I really don't care at this point. Um, but the fact of the matter is, I questioned the technician. And then they tell me I got to put 5,000 more miles on the car. Well, the car's now got 10,000 miles on it. I've had the car for 13 months, just over a year. And actually it'll be a year, shit, it's already been a year. It's already been a year in late November. So, um, and in the state of Virginia, you have 14 months um, to figure out what's going on with the car. So basically you have a time frame um, that you have to, you have to kind of fit this into for them to do anything with the lemon law. So I contacted Ford corporate several times. It took them two weeks to get back to me. So I've been fighting this since well before Thanksgiving. And here it is, three, four days before Christmas. And so it took me two weeks to get a hold back to a hold of my regional manager. Absolute freaking nightmare. So if any of you guys are going through this process, be prepared to wait. Um, so it, it's 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 a process. So you're gonna have to be very patient. Um, but finally, I explained it once I got a hold of her. I explained to her exactly what had happened. I told her how pissed off I was, and. The fact that she, you know, she, I told her everything was going on. Then the driver's side window started clunking when you went to go put it down. Um, you know, just a lot of little things. Then I started smelling antifreeze from the front of the car after driving it for a while. Um, so then I took, <laughs> I was told to drop it back off at the Ford dealership to get the window looked at and to get the antifreeze uh, issue looked at. So I did that. And finally Ford told me that, you know, once I told, you know, I let Ford know exactly what was going on with it and the whole 5,000 miles thing. And I told him, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that because if I do that, it's going to put it out of the mileage range. As far as, you know, when you trade a car in Ford deducts a percentage for the mileage that's on the car, I'm not putting 5,000 my extra miles on the car just for you to deduct that from my pocket for the money that you're going to give me for it. That's not going to happen. Second of all, it's going to putting out of the time frame because I can't put 5,000 miles on this car in a month when my time time runs out in one month. So that's inexcusable. That's just not going to happen. So I explained all this to Ford and then she was like, you know what? I, I agree. You know what? We're going to resubmit your case to the almighty power at B that decides whether you get a buyback or not. Okay. I said, that's great. And I told her, you know, I've been patient. I've been patient up until this point. And I did some research and I said, look, if you don't come back with the answer I want, the next call you get will be from my lawyers. And she was like, oh, no, 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 we, we don't, we don't want to deal with that. We don't have to, you know, I want to do this amicably. We don't have to, I don't want to have to worry about that. You know, we can, we can handle this. Okay, well, I'm just letting you know because now I found out that in the state of Virginia, I don't know if this is like this everywhere, but Lemon Law lawyers don't bill the client. They bill the dealership or bill the corporation. So if I get a Lemon Law lawyer, or if you guys get a Lemon Law lawyer, the lawyer then clocks all this time, and at the end of the case, at the end of everything, he bills Ford or whatever corporation you're dealing with. So not only would they have to buy the car back ultimately, but then they got to pay a lawyer bill. That's the last thing they want to do because then it gets them worse exposure than they would have had originally. So it's going to be the cheaper out would have been to buy the car back. So they've been jerking me around for this thing for the last five or six months. Okay, guys, you guys have been watching my videos. You can date back to the first time I brought this up. This car started the ticking at 2000 miles. It is now almost 11,000 miles. It's got like 10,800 and something on it. I got a call back today from Ford. Four days before Christmas. And I got the best Christmas present I think I could have ever gotten. I got approved for the buyback. So now I am now have to take 
all of the RTR stuff, all the RTR glory off this car. The chin spoiler, the grill, the heat extractors, the wheels, um, you know, just the, it's all of that's left on this car. It's filthy right now, so you'll have to excuse that. All that's left on this car is cosmetic stuff, you know? So what? I got to pull the bumper off. I got to find another set of wheels. Um, that way, whatever car I do end up with, I, you know, whether it be a Mustang, I'll just put these on the other car. But so my first option, they give you two options. So she did tell me they give you two options since I got approved. The first option is you can buy the car back, which was what I chose. Buy it outright, completely. Get it out of my face. I don't want it anymore. Granted, a little part of me is still a little sad because I did enjoy the car. I really did. And I'm not trying to make this a bitch fest video because I know there are some out there that all they do is bitch and bitch and bitch about their car. But I'm not trying to have that. And, you know, my thing is I, I enjoyed the car greatly. And, um... But it's come to the point to where I can't I can't deal with the little things that are breaking on it. I can't deal with having to keep putting motors in it. And if Ford answer is Ford's answer is to just keep dropping engines in these cars over and over and over again until the warranty comes out and then you're fucked. You know what? I'm not dealing with that. So I don't like Ford's answer on that. So I'm actually opted to for them to buy the car back completely. I'm not gonna get another one unless I absolutely have to. So the only way I would get another one, because like I said, they deduct a percentage. I have a certain number that I owe in the car. It's not bought out right. I'm not that baller. So um, I do owe in the car. So if they don't offer me enough to pay off my loan, then guess what? I'm going to end up having to get a 19 Mustang. So be it. I just pray to God I don't have the same fucking problems. But if it goes that route, then it goes that route. But my first option was to buy the car back. So now I'm going to be waiting. They said it takes about three to five business days to hear back from Ford um, reacquired vehicles. And so once I hear back from them, they're going to give me an offer of what I, uh, what they feel like they're going to buy the car back for. I have the option to accept or decline. So if I decline, my only other option is to trade it out for 19, which I'll do. It's not a big deal. I'd rather not to, I'd rather not, but you know what? Hopefully I'll get a good running reliable car. I've got a 50-50 shot and say, hey, you know, I, I'm a gambler, man. I, you know, I'm, I'm a gambling man. I'll take a shot for it. So, um, but the reason why I wouldn't take or I would have to do a trade out possibly is because they could offer me, say, you know, say I owe 39000 or 38000 on the car, okay? They could come in and say, oh, we're going to give you thirty five for it. What am I going to do? Pay on a loan and pay on a car that I don't own anymore? I'll still have an outstanding loan and, and have to owe $5,000 and make payments to something that I don't even have. It doesn't make any sense. So I may end up getting another Mustang because of that. So what will happen is I'll have to trade it out and get another car. But if they do buy the car back and they give me what I want and I have to get the start over nice and fresh, I've already got my eyes on some things. So, and it's not a Mustang. Um... So yeah, I, you know, the fact of the matter is this, they buy the car back, you won't be seeing a Mustang on this channel anymore. Sorry for all my Mustang fans, I still love them, don't get me wrong, um, and I'll still have plenty of them on here because I have a lot of friends that have Mustangs, like all of them. All of them. Um, but the fact is, I have my, my eyes on some other stuff, you know, some, uh, some other performance cars within the same price range, maybe a little bit more. Um, so we'll see. But anyway, guys, I'm going to actually continue this video tomorrow. We're going to go ahead and start ripping this stuff off. I'm probably going to film some of it. And maybe on my next vlog, I don't want to run this up too much. I know I've talked forever. I'm probably bored of half of you to death. This is just an update video, guys. So I want to let you know what was going on and uh, give you an idea of what, we're, what I've been going through lately. Absolute fucking hell. So, But now I'm making, le making some leeway. And I'm excited. Um, a little bit heartbroken at the same time, you know, I, like I said, I enjoyed the hell out of the car. She looks badass. Um, she sounds badass. She's quick as shit, but I just can't get over the ticking. I can't get over the engine issues and the window issues, the antifreeze issues and the clunking, the, the strut mounts are going bad already. And now they're blaming that on my lowering springs, which is great. But 
it is what it is, guys. So, yeah. Well, we'll see what we come at, come with, uh, you know, what we get. So, uh, I'm sure you guys are, you know, we'll be updating. And, yeah, like I said, the channel's not going anywhere. It'll be still be Sinister Productions. Um, so, you know, because the next car I get will be Sinister. Um, it won't be a Mustang, but it'll be Sinister. But, uh, and if I get another Mustang, it will not be black. So I'm done with black cars. I've had five in a row. So, and I'm, I'm absolutely toast. I'm done with them. I'm tired of trying to keep them clean. So they look great when they're clean in my garage. But as soon as I pull it out of my garage, it's absolutely filthy and dusty. So, especially with me living in a construction zone where they're building new houses and stuff like that. So I'm kind of stuck doing that. But, all right, guys, enough rambling. I will see you on the next one. And trust me, this is not the end of Sinister Productions. We're just getting started. Later. Devil without a cause!